This is my um, one bit storage register or you can consider it a memory. Now I've been watching a lot of videos on YouTube uh, with uh, a lot of guys that are trying to make circuits like this and they're basically using uh, cross-hatched uh, uh, OR gates, AND gates, NAND gates, NOR gates, but you know and they're also trying to make it with discrete components using transistors but they always end up using too many parts. So what I'm going to show you here is I'm going to show you how to make a memory 1-bit storage register or 1-bit memory using only two transistors and they're wired as a an SCR and um, SCRs are very good and the function of these two right here one is an NPN and the other one's a PNP and they're basically wired back to back <clears throat> the rest of the circuit here, these two buttons that you see, one is for a uh, low signal, the other one's high, one's tied to VCC, the other one's to ground. And this third transistor here is only a driver for the LED to show the status. So, uh, now you'll see here, this is the low button. I'm going to push this one here because the LED's on. If I push this one here, you'll see that it's off, the LED goes off, so I got a low signal. But I can continuously push it and it won't change, okay? And if I want to turn it back on, uh, turn it, uh, push the VCC button, high button, there it goes back on, and I can continuously push that, and it is on and continues to stay on. Now, <clears throat> the beauty of these two transistors, PNP and NPN, wired back to back, function as a silicone controlled rectifier. And when they turn on, they turn on very hard because they both saturate each other and uh, it's difficult to explain that so I'm going to go to my computer and I'm going to show you on uh, my paint program where I drew this circuit and I will show you how this thing actually functions okay so bear with me I'll be with you in one sec now here we are let me expand this okay now you can see here I'll get a close-up of this. This is the circuit that I just showed you. And uh, you can see right there how it's wired. Okay, now this transistor here, these two transistors, the NTE199 and 159, you can see they're, they're wired back-to-back. -back. Uh, the PNP emitter tied to the 1K to VCC emitter of the uh, NPN to ground and the collector to base and collector to base on both of them. And what they do is, is when you hit that switch, S1, it supplies uh, B plus to the uh, to Q2 base, that turns it on. When that base is turned on, the collector goes to ground. When the collector is pulled to ground, it turns on the uh, Q1 transistor very hard, which supplies the uh, VCC voltage from the emitter to base and that voltage at the collector of Q1 is reapplied back to Q2 base which keeps it on. So the voltage coming from Q1 keeps Q2 on which grounds out the base of Q1 which keeps that on which supplies Q2 which keeps that on which supplies Q1 which keeps that on. So you can see how they keep each other on and it's uh, it's locked in that position as long as the power is not interrupted at Q2. Now, because these things are, are they turn each other on very hard, okay, uh, to the point of saturation, they're very difficult to dislocate. So uh, that's why it's necessary to have a switch directly to ground at the base of Q2 because you have to ground that signal completely to zero. And once you do that, then you're lifting the collector from ground from Q2 and that leaves the base of Q1 floating. So that means that Q1 goes off and Q2 goes off. That means that the signal at the output of the uh, at the LED anode is um, is a high. Sorry, it's a low. So there's no voltage because the uh, the uh, transistor, the one in, the 159 uh, output transistor is off. So it's not supplying any VCC to LED. So um, Anyways, there it is. That's a two-transistor, one-bit uh, memory or one-bit storage register. And I hope you guys will uh, take this, uh, you know, elaborate on this circuit instead of using all those multiple parts you guys are putting together out there. Okay, it's, it's, it's not 
it's you're just overusing components not necessary look at this circuit here it works exactly the same as you guys are designing it and i'm only using two parts all right so there you go you're welcome to the circuit have fun enjoy and uh see you next time